Welcome back, friends. My name is Dan Vega, and I'm a spring developer advocate at VMware. Today, we're answering a question inside of the spring developers community on Twitter. If you didn't know that existed, that's one of the reasons I want to start doing videos like this. Uh, it's a really great community over there of over 2.2 thousand people. Uh, we just launched it probably a couple months ago, so it's really nice to see uh, people joining our community. So a bunch of questions in here, and we're going to answer some of them. Today I'm going to focus on one, and that one is from my buddy and friend and co-worker, Deshaun. And Deshaun asks, I like using the SLF for J annotation provided by Lombok, but I don't necessarily like needing to add Lombok just for that. What should I do? So just to be clear here, uh, nothing against Lombok, but if that's all you're using Lombok for is to get that shortcut, there are probably better ways to do it. So in today's tutorial, what I want to do is we'll create a new Spring project and I'll add Lombok. I just want to show you what he is talking about if you're not familiar with Lombok. And then we'll take a look at a solution that I came up with that I think is very easy and has no external dependencies. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump on in. All right, so before we jump in and create our project, I want to take a look at the documentation for Project Lombok if you're not familiar with what it is. So Project Lombok is a Java library that automatically plugs into your editor and build tools, spicing up Java. Basically, it's a bunch of shortcuts. So you never have to write like getters and setters or equals or hash codes or things like logging, um, which we're going to take a look at today. So if you go into the features and you go to stable, you can see all of the different features. One that we're going to look at today is down here under log. So basically, you can annotate a class with that log. And it's going to basically give you a shortcut and write out some type of logger for you at the top of your file. There are also different flavors of this. So in this case, the question in hand was the SLF4J. So if you add that, it basically creates this line right here, which we'll see. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to Spring Initializer, our favorite place to kickstart our Spring Boot applications. I'm going to create a new, pretty simple application here. Um, we'll actually just call this dev.danvega. We'll say hello, Lombok. And I think we'll just leave everything the same. We'll create a web application, and then you can choose Lombok here uh, from the dependencies list. So what we'll do is we'll generate that project and open it up in IntelliJ IDEA. All right, so here we are in our application. I'm going to go ahead and create a new Java class. We'll call this the home controller. And in the home controller, this is going to be a REST controller. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and create a single get mapping. And this is just going to return a string. And we'll say return hello Lombok. Okay, nothing fancy here, but this isn't the point of that video, this video. So what we can do now is we can add an annotation here, SLF4J. And if we go ahead and save this, what I want to do is run a build. So if we go build, build project, we can go ahead and look in our target directory under classes, dev.danvega. Here's our home controller. You can see what the generated output is, similar to what we saw in the documentation. We just get this private static final logger log is equal to logger factory uh, dot get logger and then the name of the class that you're logging. So in this case, the home controller. So if we do this and copy this, uh, again, I think Deshaun's point was if all you're using Lombok for is this, maybe it's a little overkill to bring in a library just to do that. So if that's the case, let's get rid of that and we put this here. But again, this can kind of get tedious having to type this out, right? We programmers are lazy. I don't know about you, but I'm very lazy. If I can find any shortcut uh, to making my life as a developer uh, easier, I'm going to take it. So uh, to Deshaun and anyone else, uh, here's my solution for that problem. So what I'm going to do is copy that. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to go into uh, our preferences here. So on the Mac, command, uh, comma. And I'm going to look for something called live templates. So I'll go ahead and leave a link to 
a video I've done on live templates before, but we'll just quickly cover what they are. They're basically shortcuts, but they're very powerful shortcuts. I use them a lot in demos and presentations to kind of quickly um, generate some code or write some code. In this case, we have a bunch of different categories. So one of them that I have down here is Spring Boot. You can easily create different template groups. So let's say you have a demo that you're working on that you want to show off. Create a group for just that demo. And, and that's the case down here. I have a test containers uh, group for a presentation that I'm doing on test containers. If it's something that you're going to use in a particular language or framework all the time, do something like this where I have Spring Boot. Under Spring Boot, uh, I have some things going already, uh, but what I'm going to do is create a new live template. And what we're going to do is call this, I like to call this just logger. So this is the SLF4J logger. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy in that text that we had before. So private, private static final logger log equals logger factory dot get logger. Now what, what we want to do is we want to make this part dynamic. The dot class can stay the same. So what I want to do is you can use variables here. So I want to say uh, class name. And if you go ahead and use two dollar signs, you can now edit that variable. So if you edit that variable, you can say an expression and what we can do is we can go ahead and call class name. So let's go ahead and click OK. And with that in place, we also need to define a context, like when will you use this? In this case, we're actually going to use it in the case of Java and declaration. So I'm going to choose that. So if you were to choose something like um, um, whatever, uh, a statement, and you try to use this, this may not work. So you got to make sure that your context is correct. If you're not sure, you can always just select all. So I'm going to apply and OK. So now when I'm here in this uh, home controller and I need a logger, I can go ahead and just say logger. I can start typing. I'm going to hit tab. And as you can see, it fills in the home controller for me. And now I got this log. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add some logging here in our home method. So we're going to say log.info. And we are home. And then we can go ahead and rerun this application. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit this endpoint. And then hello, Lombok. And if we go over to run, we see we are home. So just a quick little tip. Again, you can do some really powerful things with live templates in IntelliJ. I'm sure there are other ways to do it in different IDEs or text editors, but I really love live templates here in IntelliJ just because um, you can get kind of creative with those variables and you can use multiple variables. So you could say like in a group of text, hey, this is my first variable, this is my second one, and as you start tabbing, you go to each of those variables. So again, I use it in everyday development, I use it in demos, presentations, it's just very helpful. And in this case, when you're just trying to cut down on keystrokes, uh, I think it's great. So, you know, let me know, if you're using live templates in IntelliJ, I'd be interested in putting together a list of like helpful live templates maybe for Spring Boot development. So maybe we can start a collection of those. Let me know some of the things that you find repetitive and maybe we'll uh, get that list together and get it out. But Deshaun, I hope this answered your question. I hope this gave you something you needed. And for everybody else watching, I hope you learned something today as well. If you did, if you found value in this video, friends, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.